Hello everyone. Welcome to AWS Data Engineering Training Program. And as part of this training, today we will be covering ELB that stands for Elastic Load Balancers. In our previous classes, whether I talked about yesterday's class or the last week classes, we talked about two compute resources. One was EC2 instance, that's nothing but a remote server. And yesterday we talked about Lambda, that was also a compute resource that was more of a serverless service. But at the end of the day, both are compute. But sometimes a single compute resource, whether it's a server or it's a Lambda, may not be able to handle the entire load. <clears throat> Take an example of uh, e-commerce website, <clears throat> right? So e-commerce website, there are like hundreds, thousands of people are buying some products, right? And definitely whatever best configuration you use, single server may not be able to handle the traffic. <clears throat> it's like when you are going to airport, there are a lot of counters for immigration, right? We cannot do like only one person is taking the entire load. That's not possible. That's why there is a queue. There are like 20, 30 counters and whatever passengers are coming, they are distributed among those counters. Same thing is here. We need a load balancer. That means when millions of requests are coming, someone should be able to distribute the load among multiple systems. So today's class is about load balancers and let's start with the agenda. So overview of ELB service, type of load balancer. We'll talk about application load balancer, network load balancer, load balancer health check, target group, EC2 launch template, auto scaling group, auto scaling policies. There are a lot of things. There are a lot of new terms, but no need to worry about all these things are interrelated. Everything is linked with each other. And once I will show you practically, it will be more clear to you. So let's start with the overview. So load balancer, right? What it does is it distributes your workload across multiple compute resource. The purpose of distribution is first thing is one system cannot handle the load. Another one is it increases the availability and fault tolerance of your application. Because if one system is taking the entire load and unfortunately that system is down, that means your entire website or e-commerce platform, everything is down, which is not a good thing. But in case you have multiple system, right? Multiple servers. And unfortunately, even one server is down, then it's absolutely fine. Remaining server can still take care of your load, <clears throat> right? It's like one of the uh, officer on immigration counter is not feeling well and he's closing the counter. It's absolutely fine because the load can be distributed among other available officers. Same thing is here. And you can add or remove compute resource from your load balancer as per your need. Today you are having five server behind the load balancer, but you are thinking that five servers are not capable of handling my load. I need to add two more servers. You can do that. And as soon as you will add more server, your load balancer will start distributing the load among seven servers now, not five. And the vice versa scenario, if you think that five servers are not required, why to unnecessarily pay for it? You can decrease it. Maybe you remove two machines, three machines and new load will be distributed among the remaining available system. Okay. You can configure health check, which monitors the health of the compute resource. Because when we say that your load balancer will distribute the load among three machines or five or seven, how does it know how many machines are there? How does it know which machine is live, which machine is down? Because there is no point of distributing your load to a system which is down, which is not up and running. There's no point, right? So there is a concept of health check or in some terminology, we call it as a heartbeat as well. That means every server will inform load balancer about its health frequently. I mean, every 30 seconds, every two minutes. So basically load balancer has the detail about the system which are up and running and which are down. And it will always redirect your request to a running up and running system. Okay. So this is just a theoretical part, like how load balancer works. You can have a look at the diagram as well. So you can see that there are suppose six uh, users who want to access the website and instead that server, I mean, these users are not directly interacting with the server. Instead, there is a load balancer in between. 
So this load balancer will take the request from the user and as per the availability of the system, it will distribute the load. And you can see this one, six requests were coming. Now those six requests are distributed evenly among three systems. That means we are not overloading a single system. So this is the basic concept of uh, load balancer. Before we start doing it practically, in case you are having any doubt till now, uh, you can ask me. In the meantime, I will be logging in into my trial account. <coughs> While creating our pipelines, uh, where we use this one, uh, Megraj? So in the pipeline, definitely there will be, someone will be executing your job, right? So instead of executing mm -hmm. the job directly on like uh, one server, there can be load balancer. Moreover, load balancer does not fit in every request, everything. Just like you are saying in pipeline, it may not fit into a pipeline, but in case of any user facing application, suppose it's a e-commerce website, in that case, there is no pipeline, but yes, lot of requests are coming and behind the scene, as we were talking about the slide, right? Behind the scene, there are multiple servers. <coughs> uh, this one, right? Behind load balancer, there are multiple server and your request will be distributed among that. So in this example, right, there is no pipeline. So load balancer does not fit into every situation. Usually when lot of requests are coming and you want to distribute it. <coughs> Okay, like this, if we are processing any uh, large data set and uh, that that is taking some time, can we use uh, this load balancer and can we process it faster? No. Um, okay, there are two things. One is customer facing application. One is whatever you are talking about is data processing, right? End user is not yes. worried about it. So when you are doing data processing, in that case, load balancer will definitely not come into the picture. Another concept is their distributed processing. That come, can come into the picture. In distributed processing, there is a concept of master and slave system. So as a user, yeah. you would not be interacting with multiple system. Rather, you simply submit your job to a master machine. And then master machine is smart enough to, uh, you can say, split your job into multiple smaller parts and distributing it among multiple systems. But that's not load balancer. That is more of a master slave architecture. Load got balancer it, got it. That is... picture only when some end user is accessing your application got it got it Thank you. okay let me log in just give me a moment i need to fetch the code six two four nine one six <clears throat> Okay, so we'll uh, search for load balancer. <clears throat> so with load balancer, right, there will be many more concepts uh, related. As in when these will come into the picture, I will keep on explaining you. Okay. So you can see that first of all, there is no load balancer. That's absolutely fine. We'll be creating one. So when you click on create load balancer, it will give you the type. There's an application load balancer. There's a network load balancer. There's a gateway load balancer as well. You can read the description for different type of requirement, different type of load balancers are suitable. If you uh, remember these networking concepts from your college time or from your study time. You can see that there are different, uh, like in say, layer of um, network: HTTP, HTTPS, TCP, UDP, TLS. So when it's HTTP or HTTPS, usually when you are um, running a website, in that case, your application load balancer is suitable. In case UDP and TLS, this is more of a gaming stuff. In that case, you need network load balancer. And similarly, gateway load balancer is a new concept that's usually happen when there are third party applications. You can see that third party virtual appliances that supports this one. In that case, you need a gateway load balancer. 
in real time scenario most most probably 